What's up guys, Sheriff Fugit Connect 3D Printing. Today is gonna be part one of converting my Hypercube to a Volron Legacy. Let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back. So as I said, if you've seen my intro for this new series, I'm gonna be converting this original Hypercube and this is pretty much the stock build by Tech2C with a few changes, but pretty much stock Hypercube build into a Volron Legacy. And I've been wanting to build a Volron of some type for quite a long time. Just couldn't really figure out where to start you know, which printer to start with, etc. So since we've decided on the Volron Legacy, I've decided I really want to reuse as much as I can. So this video is going to be me tearing this down, which is probably going to be a time lapse because it's kind of boring. I'm going to be cutting this extrusion to fit the size for the Volron Legacy. I'm going to also need to cut some additional extrusion because I'm using 2040 at the bottom of this and it's all 2020. And then we're going to have to tap and we're gonna build the frame via with blind joints. And that's gonna be interesting because I've never really done that on any of my builds before, I don't think. Yeah, I've actually never done blind joints on anything before. So since I'm still waiting for the M6 bolts to get here, it gives me time to tear this down and get the frame ready to be built. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well, that took uh, a little while on and off working on it, uh, but I've got a humongous uh, thing here of all the screws and the T-nuts and nuts and some bearings. I ended up throwing most of the other bearings away, uh, but these bushing type ones, I did keep these ones because they're still good. Uh, lots of brackets and lots of extrusion here that I'm gonna use to cut these down to fit the actual dimensions, well, the actual lengths that I need for the Vorn Legacy, because I'm gonna build that one to size. I am gonna keep my little PETG feet that I had on the Hypercube because I like them. I think they worked out really well. Uh, just kind of make it, I don't have to put anything else on these ones, I can just reattach these once I get there. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do tomorrow. Actually, we'll go outside the garage and I'll cut these ones down and I'll get a few extra pieces that I need to cut the other few lengths that I don't have enough of here. So I'm gonna do that and then when I come back, we will be tapping and building the frame. Well, you can see I've already started, but I have all the extrusion cut and all of these 370 millimeter ones, I need to go ahead and tap them. So I've started tapping a few here for M6, because that's what works with the Zotec extrusion. You're supposed to use M5, but this is what I have, so that's what I'm using. Uh, the 410s here are cut. They don't need to be um, tapped at all, but I've got six more of these to do, and then I think we'll be able to start building the frame. All right, well, that was an experience. There's a lot of work doing that. So the frame is ready to build now. 
was loud. So I have my four uprights. Again, I'm doing the blind joint method, which means that these four uprights need to be 410 millimeters versus the, uh, the CAD file for Fusion, which shows everything as 370. So it's just 370 plus 40, you get 410. So these are labeled, so I'll F on there for front, and they're actually gonna go, sorry, they're gonna go like this. So front right and front left, because uh, there is a beam that goes across the middle here, and there's nothing that goes throughout the top here, it's just down lower. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this. I already tapped all of my extrusion. Again, I'm using M6 bolts, just because the Ziltec extrusion is too, the hole is too big for an M5. So we're using M6 button heads. They work out just fine. I did have to drill my holes uh, for the blind drill. It's a little bit bigger. It's okay. Oh yeah, and I did keep my feet because I don't want this to scratch anything and definitely need to put some type of feet underneath this printer. So I have these PDG ones from the Hypercube. I'm just gonna reuse them uh, because they're already ready to go. So without further ado, let's put this together. Uh, I am gonna talk through it a little bit just because I feel like it'll be a little bit more helpful for, for people, but we'll kind of just see how that goes. I'm gonna start with the, uh, the back. So the back has holes on uh, both ways because they're coming in from both ways. So it's really easy. All you have to do is thread in your bolt. Again, whether you're doing M5s or M6s, doesn't really matter. And just slide through and just have to line up the bottom there, which I have my wee little uh, square here to help me with keeping everything square. Because I will say blind joints, while they are a superior and more effective way to put a frame together, uh, they want to wander in my experience. So you really have to hold them quite tightly down so that when you tighten down, it's not going to, again, wander wander away. Where, and we'll be able to shimmy a little bit because I do have this bow here in the middle of my table. It's better if you do this on something like super flat. Maybe I'll just move this over to one side for now, make it a little bit easier. Uh, so again, so we're doing the back here first. So I have my two uprights and now I'm gonna do my top as well. And it's really easy because once you have the four uprights at their length, all the other ones are all identical. So there's really not much thinking that has to be done when assembling this because they're all the same. And now we can go ahead and do, well, I guess I'll do my four corners. So again, backs towards you. And I will do, add these on now. I don't really like the blind ones is the fact that they, your shooting can twist while you're doing it. I personally don't like that. I'm going to tighten all these up once I get the frame kind of built. I think it'll be easier to tighten some of these up. Okay. So that is now our four sides. Now we can go ahead and put on our front. So here's front left. Might end up taking this into the kitchen to tighten these up. Might end up being easier to ensure that they're nice and square. The kitchen counter's pretty flat. Okay, so that's our two sides are up there now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lower down. This is gonna be my front center beam here. Now this needs to be 60 millimeters from the top. So what I can do is I can push this down to about there. We'll get it tightened up a little bit. All right, and our final piece is the front bottom of the frame. There's a the frame. 
So before I uh, finish this, I'm going to run to the kitchen, put this on the counter, and just tighten all these down. I'll be right back. Oh. So what I did is what's called the tap test. So when you're on a really, really flat, moves out of my face here. When you're on a really, really flat surface, you want to push down on each of your corners uh, to make sure that they are perfectly flat. And I got that on all the corners here. So that's almost it. Let's put these feet on real quick. Now that's the frame completed there. <laughs> so this is definitely a great start for this. I still have uh, Metroplex back here printing away. I was able to get the EBL fixed on that. So that is printing away at all the parts we need for this. And that's gonna be it for this being part one. Now the next part is going to be the Z axis assembly. I think that's the next one we're gonna do. And then each video will just be a different axis or a different part or something like that. So I'm just gonna kind of go through the series and get this done. So thank you all for joining in. If you guys want to pick up any of the parts that I bought for this, I'll put some links down below. So do your shopping with those. A little bit of what you buy comes here to me at no extra cost to you. And that way I can build projects like this, buy more extrusion, buy parts, etc., etc. So I thank you all for tuning in. Happy printing, and I'll see you next time.